Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. This uh, season of Epiphany, the season of light. We would like to uh, also welcome those who are joining us on uh, Facebook today as well. A little frost on the pumpkin, but uh, a couple months we'll be firing up those lawnmowers. So, good news. <laughs> Tracy, do you have a couple of announcements for us? I do. Um, February 6th will be our annual meeting. Um, also, after worship today, anybody interested, there will be the opportunity to go over the budget that we have proposed um, in the fellowship hall. Um, February 1st, Pastor Dave Anenson will be returning as our interim pastor. And then um, this week in prayer, we keep Amy Renner and her family at the loss of her dad, Shannon Ashby, on Wednesday. And then Mel Pexa is hospitalized this week. Um, while some are grieving or healing, others have reasons to celebrate. And so this week we celebrate birthdays with Laura, Jackson, and Aminda. There are no anniversaries, but we have congratulations for Judith and Dick, who were married yesterday. Um, and with that, let us begin our worship. Thanks to all of those who are participating in leading worship today. We invite you to please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you and are your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory. When it did not appear as we expected, we have rejected your word. When it made us confront ourselves, we have failed to show hospitality to those who call us. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Friends, rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Let us live free and forgiven as children of God. Amen. Gracious man. 
in the highest. Peace to God's people on earth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word let us pray to the lord Lord, have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy help save and defend us O god Let us pray. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The exiles have returned and rebuilt Jerusalem. Now Ezra the priest reads the law of Moses to them in the public square. When they hear it, they weep for their sins and for the long years in exile. But Ezra reminds them that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The first reading is from the eighth chapter of Nehemiah, verses one through three, five through six, and eight through 10. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest, Ezra, brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and of the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Psalm 19 will be spoken alternately. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course.
The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. <laughs> Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. The Apostle and Pastor Paul used the metaphor of the human body to describe how intimately connected we are to the church, in the church. For this struggling congregation in Corinth, Paul delivers a vital message of unity that is a mark of the church today. The second reading is from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses, through, verses 12 through 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the bo in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas one more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater goods? Gifts, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I have a message for our children. Several years ago, I received this little plaque. It says, Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. Well, we indeed know that Jesus loves all the people and the creatures clear across the world. And yet, each one of you is a favorite of God. It may remind us of a couple Bible verses in the Bible where we are called the apple of God's eye. So I've got a basket full of apples here. And uh, so you, 
As a child of God, are the very apple of God's eye, God cares for you individually very, very much. But of course, we have a whole basket full of apples, which means that God not only loves each one of us intimately and individually, but that the Lord God loves all the apples in the world, all the children of the world. And in fact, this happens to be uh, a lemon in the basket of apples. God even loves the lemons, perhaps especially the lemons. So we give thanks to the Lord God that you are the apple of God's eye. You are a favorite chosen child of God. Shall we pray? Gracious, loving, living Lord God, we thank you that you come to surround each one of us with your good care, your grace, and your constant affection. And Lord, we thank you that you care and love all, every single child in the world and all your creatures, great and small. And all God's children say, Amen. I invite you to please stand for the gospel. Jesus began his public ministry by returning to his hometown of Nazareth. He went to the synagogue, and when it was time for the reading of Scripture, Jesus opened up the book of the prophet Isaiah. And then he read. And those words would claim his identity and it would give us his mission and his purpose for this world. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee and a report about Jesus spread through the whole surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. Jesus stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Spirit has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. We're having just a little bit of mic problem today, as you can see. So I'll get myself untangled here. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus stood up in the synagogue in Nazareth and declared, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me, sent me, to proclaim good news to the poor, to set free those who are held captive, to give sight 
to those who are blind and to announce the year of the Lord's mercy. Friends, this is exactly what Jesus has come to do among us. This is Jesus' mission and purpose for his life. Jesus has come to draw near to us, to bring glad tidings to all the poor of the earth, to bring release to those who are in bondage, who are held captive. Jesus comes to bind up, as Isaiah says, the brokenhearted. Jesus comes to bring healing to those who are blind, to those who are afflicted. This is the mission statement of our Lord Jesus. So when we teach our confirmation students, these are verses that we invite our youth to underline and to even memorize. And we would invite you to do the same as well. Luke 4, verses 17 and 18 in your Bible. You remember a couple of weeks ago that Jesus had his identity affirmed by God the Father at the time of his baptism when we gathered at those murky, muddy waters of the Jordan River. And as Jesus came up out of the water, God the Father declared, This is my beloved Son. My beloved Son. Then last week, we gathered in a little village which was west and a little bit south of Nazareth, a town called Cana, and there was a wedding. It was the first sign, the first miracle that Jesus administered among them. When he, what did he do? He turned water into wine, that the celebration might continue. I would imagine Judith and Dick had a celebration yesterday. So Jesus brings a sense of joy and gratitude into the ordinary but extraordinary events of daily life, such as a wedding. And in that intimate relationship between a husband and a wife in marriage, Jesus shows that that same intimacy is with each one of us as he lives in relationship with to us. It's like a solid marriage, an intimate relationship. And now today we experience, we hope, we pray that the mission, the purpose of Jesus will be accomplished here among us and in all those places where trouble lurks around this world. I would imagine each one of us can find our place within that group of folk that Jesus spoke those words to in the synagogue of Nazareth. Some of us might be literally poor. It was just stated on the news this past week that 40% of the population in the United States does not have $1,000 in a savings account to cover an emergency. That's of great concern. And if you're not poor, perhaps your grandparents were poor. Mine were. Living hand to mouth one day to the next. We know that there are so many poor around the world and in our very own country. And then again, all of us have been held captive to one thing or another, haven't we? You might be held captive to a chronic illness. It could be held, you may be held captive to depression or anxiety. It could be an addiction. We could be held captive to a political ideology that turns us away from the care of our Lord God. And then, of course, as we confessed not long ago, that we are all held captive or in bondage to the power of sin. And we pray, too, we think of the Unger people who are held now in concentration camps, captive in China, or the political prisoners who are held in Russia, Venezuela, or Syria. 
Or we might find ourselves among that group of people who are broken hearted. Each one of us has been broken hearted in some way, haven't we? Because we've all experienced loss. And too often we watch our children or our grandchildren who, well, they, they become afflicted with an illness of one kind or another, at, or they may be rejected at school or some activity, or they may just lose their way. And our heart aches for our children. You may be familiar with the books or the TV series, All Creatures Great and Small, by British veterinarian uh, James Harriet. He wrote these books back in the 1930s. In book two, he tells of a little boy in the village in Yorkshire where he lived and practiced, a little boy named Wesley Binks. Wesley Binks, even though he was only eight or ten years old, he was a troublemaker around town. He did some very nasty things in the community and even at the veterinary clinic where Harriet was employed. But one day, Wesley was found sitting in the waiting room of the veterinary clinic. And Dr. Harriet came out and saw him and, he, and the little boy said, my dog's sick. Someone had given him a mangy little black dog it became his friend, but now the dog was ill. Dr. Harriet examined the dog and sadly he saw that it had distemper. And back in the 30s it was not easily treated. Most people brought their pet in when it was too late. But Dr. Harriet told Wesley that he would treat his little dog. Now, Wesley wanted to pay for the veterinarian's service. And so this little boy, Wesley, got a job. He was delivering papers. He would take some odd jobs in the community. And every time he came in to have his little dog treated, he would pay Dr. Harriet, even though Dr. Harriet really didn't want any compensation. But Wesley paid him a shilling or two when he came. The dog wasn't getting any better, and so Dr. Harriet visited Wesley's house. And he realized then and there that this little boy was abused. He was neglected. His clothes had a stench. They were ragged and thin. His parents were near to wells. The home was a pigsty. Dr. Harriet went and looked in the little basket where the little dog laid, and he realized that it was too late and he had to put the dog down. And little Wesley, this tough little street creature, he stood stoically and then tears came to his eyes. And then Dr. Harriet gave him a hug, an embrace. Well, sadly, little Wesley returned to his old way of life. He got into greater trouble and it soon turned into thievery and crime. Friends, our scriptures make it very clear that is for such children like little Wesley that our Lord Jesus comes to bring the gospel of hope and redemption. Jesus comes to release, to bring freedom to the children who are held captive to one thing or another. What's our ELCA motto? It's God's work, our hands. Jesus is in the restoration business in a multitude of ways here in our lives, in this country and around the world, God is at work healing, lifting up, restoring, bringing recovery. And we realize that most of the time Jesus works through you and me, through our hands. Just think if someone, anyone in Yorkshire would have 
become a mentor or befriended little Wesley Binks. He might have received the love of God through the attention of another person and his life would have turned in another direction. Well, this past Monday, we remembered the ministry of Martin Luther King, Jr. You may have heard that one of the key events in his ministry, his work in the gospel, was in the Memphis Sanitary Sanitary Workers' Strike. The vast majority of the sanitation workers in Memphis were black. They were not paid for a day off. They had no vacation no sick leave, no pensions, and no health care. They received minimum wage. If they got sick, they lost their job. They would go into the backyards of the white folk in the community and they would put the trash into these leaky metal buckets and then carry them on their heads out to the truck. On rainy days, they were not allowed to get inside the cab with other white workers. And so the black sanitation workers would often climb into the back of the truck with the garbage in inclement weather. And on one particular incident, the auger in the back of the truck accidentally fired up. It crushed and killed two of the workers. Dr. King, Pastor King, came to Memphis, impelled by the gospel of Jesus, by perhaps verses like we have experienced today. And King would plea and call for the dignity and the fairness of the sanitation workers for all God's children. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has come among us to bring the glad tidings to all the poor, to bring freedom, to bring liberty to all those who are put down, oppressed, and held captive one way or another. Our Lord Jesus has come among us to bring healing and hope to all those afflicted by disease or by other trials. Jesus comes to us to announce God's mercy God's loving grace to all those who are in dire straits. Jesus has come for you to be with us, to be for us, and through us. Jesus has come for the sake of all God's children. The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds always in the faith of Christ.
truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was On the third day, he rose again, in accordance to the scriptures, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end of war. God of grace. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression, especially Mel, Tracy, Rona, Bobby, Jacob, Kathy, Bob, John, Leona, Tammy, Marvin, Kim, Mark, Lori, Helen, Joy, Robert, Marcia, Sarah, Diane, Rachel, Deanna, Rhonda Lee, Gary, Susan, and Max. God of grace. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this congregation, especially the Mission of Hope and our duo ladies. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us, God of grace. In Thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn, especially the Renner family. Bring us together in our everlasting glory, God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share God's peace. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who is your light made manifest in all the nations. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, remember us in your love and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You're invited to come to the Lord's table. There is a place for you and enough for all.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and always. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sending him as the Spirit sends us forth to serve, ELW 551. keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.